Hello, Margaret from Botany Bay Imports here. Today, we will be doing another Groomopedia talk. We have Joel Wakefield joining us today. Hi, Joel. Hey, Margie, how are you? I'm good, Joel. How are you? Yeah, pretty good, thanks. Are we ready for to do a podcast today? Yeah, let's get cracking with it. Okay. If you can just let us know a bit about yourself. Who are you? Yep, so like you said, I'm Joel Wakefield. Um, I've been a groomer for almost five years. Um, I've also been involved with breeding and showing poodles in my spare time. Oh, perfect. I've seen you um, breed a few a few poodles. Um, yeah, that keeps me busy. So I'm practically grooming during Monday to Friday and then showing dogs on weekends. Perfect. Um what did you want to be when you were a kid? Uh, when I was a little boy, I used to want to be a barber. Okay. And I used to hack the hair off my sister's troll dolls um, <laughs> and then sometimes cut little holes into my own hair. <laughs> <laughs> so I suppose your business name works out yeah, well. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's where it, my business name came from, a little bit of that. Yes. <laughs> um Why did you become a groomer, Joel? Um, I was sick of my old job um, and I always wanted to work with animals, so I thought I would just give it a good crack. Okay, perfect. Um, what made you start your business? Uh, just a career change. Um, my partner was self-employed and he used to have um, a lot of flexible time because uh, he could choose his own hours and still make good money. So I just wanted to do something similar. Yeah, it, it's good, I think, owning your own business and like that. You're flexible, open when you want, close when you want, do what you want. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, all the extra spare time you can have, have yeah. um, and then not having someone telling you what you can and can't do. That's correct. <laughs> so um, how did you find networking with other groomers? Um, well, I'm a pretty shy person, but I found the networking pretty easy as um, most of the groomers are pretty friendly um, and want to help out um, where they can, and especially new groomers, getting them on the right path. Yeah, and with you, I suppose, being on the showy side as well, you've probably met quite a few groomers there as well. Yeah, I met um, yeah a few good groomers. And just breeders too that um, help me a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, just like showing me new techniques and things. Yeah, perfect. Um, what made you attend seminars? Um, well, I always wanted to keep bettering myself and learn, um, like breed clips or just different techniques. Um, and then I also find, like, if you're having a bit of a downtime with your grooms, um, it just helps get your mojo back um, and starts making you feel good about your grooms again. Okay, yeah. Uh, is there any particular seminar that you preferred, like that you attended, or? Um, I like breed specific ones. Like um, I did a poodle one with Jackie Answorth, which oh, yeah. I thought was good. Yeah. Yeah, I think just the breed specific ones are good because. That's when what you, you do like a grooming on. course, you don't particularly learn about all the different breeds. It's something yeah. you've got to do in your own time. Yeah. And what are some of your achievements? Um, I guess um, starting my first mobile business would have been an achievement. Um, another big one was getting runner-up in show at the Pup Cup Grooming Comp. And... Um, getting on the Oster and Sheer Magic show team, that was a big one. That's a great one, uh, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, that's a great one. Um, I didn't see that happening so soon. Yeah. I haven't been grooming that long. Yeah. Um, but I've been working hard at trying to better myself. Yeah, and, um, and, so and we, and we much... could see that over the time as well, so. Yeah, same with my presentation of my own dogs, just always trying to do better. Um, and I guess just always placing in the comps that I have gone to. Yes. Um, yeah, that's probably about it I can think of off the top of my head. Okay. Um, what about your first experience in the grooming ring? Um, 
um, my first experience, I was super nervous, which I am with any um, grooming comp I go to. But my friend Monique um, kept pushing me, saying it's going to be fine. It'll be a good learning experience. Um, I ended up pulling through and attending and placing first in my class. Oh, good. Um, and she was right. I ended up loving it in the end. Yeah. Like once I placed and got to meet different groomers and things like that. Yeah. Um, Monique is a good one, I suppose, for advice. Yeah, she is a good one. Um, she's always willing to help people. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which, um, which breed do you normally cover? Obviously poodles. <laughs> yeah. Um, I will have a crack at any breed, but yeah, poodles are my heart dog. Yeah. So, um, Monique helped me a lot with them too. Um, earlier you said that you breed them. How long have you been breeding poodles for? Um, I've been breeding and showing them probably three years now. Okay. So that's what um, pretty much, well, it was probably close to four years. When I started grooming, I didn't have any dog experience. Um, and when I was doing my course, they spoke about um, responsible breeders and um, just like house concerns for crossbreeds and stuff. And I saw a lot of the house concerns, like with a lot of the salon dogs coming in that were crossbreeds. So that's what made me choose a purebred and then, yeah, led down to me. Um, showing and breeding too. Mm, perfect. Um, what risks have you made as a groomer? Um, I guess a risk would have been after I finished my grooming course, I started my own mobile business mm -hmm. um, with not much experience. Um, I guess another one would have been moving my mobile business to another state. Uh, and then I ended up just selling my mobile trailer and um, opening up a salon instead. Yeah. That's the one you're currently at, is that right? Yeah, the yeah. one Yeah, the one in Byron Bay, yeah. currently there. And hopefully everything is going okay with, um, due to coronavirus and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, it was a little bit, especially because the new business too, it was a little bit quiet when it first hit, but it all picked back up and went back to normal fairly quickly. Yeah, I suppose people need that was good. their dogs groomed. <laughs> yeah, and they but, all yeah, still need to be what maintained and stuff. Yeah, and probably a lot of people have also um, purchased a lot of dogs over this period. And yeah, so, so I suppose many people, it's good. Like even puppy inquiries, like mm. they're out of control, like so many people wanting puppies. Yeah. So do you have a waiting list on puppies? Um, yeah, I have a waiting list for a few people, but I generally don't like to keep one just because I only have usually one litter a year. Okay. Um, and most people end up just wanting one now so they get impatient things. So just to make life easier for them and me, I just don't really keep a wait, wait list yeah. as such. Yeah. What are some of your success stories? Um, I guess... Um, like opening up my own salon would have been a success story. Um, I guess how I've developed over five years as a groomer. Like when I first started, I couldn't scissor a dog properly. Yeah. And even when I got into showing dogs, I couldn't scissor my own show dogs. And it's something I always wanted to do. Um, but I just kept working on it and watching some of my friends that are good groomers. Um, but yeah, but now I can scissor all my own dogs, scissor client dogs, scissor friend show dogs. So I think that's coming a long way with my skills. Oh, good. Um, so who is your worldwide mentor? Um, I'd have to say Monique, just because when I first started grooming, um, she lived the next suburb over from me. Yeah. And I used to look up photos on Facebook of her groom and just be like so impressed with like the detail of her finish and things. Yeah. Um, and like I said, she's the one that got me into showing dogs because mm -hmm. I didn't know even where to begin with that. Yeah. And she also taught me um, profile and how to hand scissor. Yes. Well done, Monique Finch. Yeah. Even Tamara, like she's another one that I've always looked at her poodle grooms and just yeah. been like wowed by it. Yeah. And she's another one that will always 
help, help anyone out. that sends her a message. Yeah, they're both good. Um, what about any tips for beginner groomers who are starting out? Um, I think a big one um, would be to take time with your prep work. Just making sure the dog's um, squeaky clean, 100% blow dried and fully brushed out. Um, because I just think you can't do a nice groom if the dog isn't prepped correctly. Um, I also think it's not um, a professional look if you're sending dogs out that still have damp ears or wet faces. Yeah. Okay. So that would be a big one because, yeah, no matter what, like, if it's not prepped properly, you're never going to get a nice smooth finish. Okay, perfect. Um, thanks for your time today, Joel. Um, and I hope all the listeners enjoy hearing Joel's story. Thanks, Joel. Thanks, Margie. All right, you have a good day. You too. Bye. Bye.